Hi friends! Today I want to do a quick tutorial where I show you how to make your very own cute little amigurumi octopus. Are you ready to get started? Let's go! Alright, so you will need scissors, yarn needle, safety eyes if that's what you choose, a tiny bit of black yarn, and worsted weight yarn in your color that you've chosen. Any color you want will do. These little guys can be any color. And then I am using a D or 3.25 crochet hook. All right, let's get started here. The first thing that we're going to do in making this amigurumi is we're going to work from the top down using increases in magic ring. All right. If you've never done some of these techniques before, I do have other tips videos where I go over those things. So these will be quick versions of those overviews from that video. We're going to start with a magic ring. And then I am going to hold on to that loop that I've created, like when I'm doing a slip knot, but I'm not going to pull it through. I'm going to pinch and bring up a chain. Now I can start my single crochets. I'm going to do six single crochets into the chain or into this magic ring here. One, two, three, four, adjust your magic ring or your hold if you need to, five, and six. There's my six, and I'm going to use this tail to pull it tight. Not too tight that it breaks, but tight enough that you close your hole. Now we're going to increase by row. We're going to do an increase, which is two single crochets, into each stitch around. So we're going to go from six stitches to 12 stitches. So we go in that first one and increase all around. So one, two, next stitch, three, four, next stitch, five, six, next, seven, eight, next, nine, ten, next, eleven, and twelve. So that's your second round. The next round, you're going to be going from 12 to 18 stitches, and you're going to increase in every other stitch around. So first stitch, one, next stitch, two, three. And we have just one stitch in the next, so that's four. And then an increase here, five, six, single, seven, increase, eight, nine, single, ten, increase, eleven, twelve, single, thirteen, increase, fourteen, fifteen, single, sixteen, in the last increase of this round, seventeen, and eighteen. All right now you have three rounds. Now we're going to increase the next row 
two single and one increase. And this will make it go from 18 to 24. So we're going to do single one, single two, increase three, four. Single five, single six, increase seven and eight. Single nine, single 10, increase 11, 12, single 13, single 14, increase 15, 16, single 17, single 18, increase 19 and 20, single 21, single 22, increase 23 and 24. And that is the end of our fourth round. All right. If you would like to use a stitch marker to mark the rounds so that you don't have to count as much, you could just count one, two, increase, one, two, increase around as you go. You may do that to mark the ends of your rounds. I just like to count, but that's personally how I do it. All right, the next round is going to be one, two, three, increase. So three single crochet and then one increase increasing from 24 stitches in the round to 30 stitches in the round. Single one, single two, single three, increase four, five. And the increases on this row are always gonna be on the count of five. So if you're counting it by fives, Increases on 5, 10, 15, 20, all the way around. So that was five. Single, six, seven, eight. Here we are, increase, nine and 10. Single, 11, 12, 13. Increase, 14 and 15. You can also see that you are increasing in the increase from the round before you, if that helps you if you're trying to find where to increase. If you've lost count, you can double check that way. Okay, so that was 15. Single, 16, 17, 18, increase here, 19 and 20, single 21, 22, 23, increase 24, 25, singles, 26, 27, 28, last increase of this round, 29 and 30. And there's your fifth row. We're going to do one more row of increases before we start working down the body. All right, so this one, like the row before, you were on fives for your increases. This, all your increases are gonna hit on the multiples of six. So we're gonna do four singles and an increase. And again, it's on the increase from the row before. All right, so starting the final increase round. Singles, one, two, three, four, then we increase 
five, six. Singles, seven, eight, nine, ten, and our increase, eleven, twelve. Singles, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, increase, seventeen, eighteen. Singles, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, increase here, twenty-three, twenty-four. Singles, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, increase here, twenty-nine, thirty. Okay, singles, 31, 32, 33, 34, last increase, 35, 36. All right, here is where I am going to put in my stitch marker. And I'm going to use this one today. All right, so I'm going to mark that stitch. That is where the end of my round is going to be when I am working on this octopus. Now, for the body, I'm going to do six rows in the round. Just going around this one single crochet in each single crochet from the previous round. There's no chaining and turning. We're just going to work until you have five rows, or six rows, excuse me, past this stitch marker. So this marks row one. Once you have six, we will start our decreases, close them up, and make the legs. So I am going to keep working on this you keep working on yours and we will fast forward ahead once you have six rows of single crochets, no increases. See you then. Okay, now I have my six rows, one, two, three, four, five, six of straight single crochet to complete the body of my octopus. Now I need to insert the safety eyes. I have size 12 millimeter safety eyes that I'm going to place in between the eighth and ninth rounds. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they're going to go in this row here in between eight and nine. about six stitches apart. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I'm gonna place them here. And then I'll put on a X. Now, I'm going to start my decrease round. This will be four single crochet followed by one invisible decrease. One, two, three, four, and a decrease. One, two, three, four, decrease, one, two, three, four, 
one, two, three, four, and decrease. One, two, three, four, decrease. One, two, three, four, decrease. And last time, one, two, three, four, and decrease. Okay, that decrease round took you from 36 to 30. So you'll have 30 stitches in your round. Now your next row of decrease is going to go from 36, or excuse me, 30 to 24. So you're going to do one, two, three single crochet followed by a decrease. And we're going to do that all the way around. So here we go. One, two, three, and decrease. 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 One, two, three, decrease. One, two, three, and decrease. All right, so that has taken you from 30 to 24. If you would like, you can go ahead and put some stuffing in now. I'm going to go ahead with the next part before I stuff. This next row is a little bit different. We will be decreasing going from 24 to 18. It is going to be two single crochet and a decrease, but we're going to do it in the back loop only. I have another video where I break that down specifically, but I will demonstrate that here. What we need for this row is to use just the back loops because we're going to use the front loops to make this a no sew octopus. We are going to use those front loops to mount the tentacles on our finished octopus. So, working in back loop only for this round, two single and a decrease. One, two, now you can do a standard decrease here. This is the way that I like to do a back loop only decrease. I go in the back of the first loop, but then I go back up that second loop and then do my single crochet. And it is invisible just like our other decreases. So we're going to do that all the way around single, single, and a decrease, single,
single and decrease. Single, single, and decrease. Single, single, and decrease. Last one. Single, single, and decrease. All right, now I'm gonna get my stuffing. When you're stuffing amigurumi, it is important to do a little bit at a time, partly to get it in the hole, but partly just so that you don't have lumps. So you fit it a, a little bit at a time, And push it to the outsides and then each new bit that you put in goes in the center and then any of your lumps will not be at the outside of your creation. I'm gonna get this pretty well stuffed and then do one more round before I finish the rest of the stuffing. And when you put in the stuffing, sometimes the eyes look a little wonky. You have to kind of push them into place as you stuff, shape your face, shape the head. Okay, so it's mostly stuffed. I'm going to do another decrease row. Now we're going to be working in both loops again. That was our only back loop only row. So I'm going to insert my hook back in and this round is going to be one single and a decrease all the way around going from 18 to 12 stitches. One and a decrease. Two and decrease. Three decrease. It's four and a single and decrease. Make six stitches. We're halfway around. Single and decrease. Makes eight, nine, decrease. Did I count wrong? I counted wrong. All right, single and a decrease all the way around. Now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I can count. Okay. Now I'm going to stuff just a little bit more. Just to finish it off before we close it. Because we have one more round to do, which will be all decreases. So it will be just six decreases using both loops. And this is up to you how much you stuff it. You want it to be firm, but not too firm because you still want it to be kind of snugly, but you need it to have shape. You also don't want to put too much in to stretch out the stitches because then you'll see the stuffing through the stitches and it just won't be as cute. I mean, it'll still be cute, but not quite as neat and tidy. All right, so I feel like that's a pretty good amount of stuffing. So I'm gonna finish them up. Okay, so six decreases. One, two, three, four, 
four. Five and six. Okay, and then I'm going to do one slip stitch to finish this off. Where are my scissors. Okay, and um, I'll leave. I'll leave just a little bit of a tail to sew him closed. I don't need very much, but sometimes it's nice to have that extra just to be able to thread your needle comfortably. So I'm going to close up this bottom so that it's smooth. So I'm going to go in and out of the stitches, the front loops, of the stitches from the last round of six decreases. And then I'm going to pull it to cinch it shut. Again, enough to tighten and close the hole, but not to break the yarn. And then I'm going to just take this needle, stick it down in the middle, pull it back out somewhere else. and it tightens and smooths that bottom. Now I'm going to thread this back through a couple more times just to hide the end. Okay, and then trim that. Squish. There we go. Here is a cute little octopus with no legs, no tentacles. Don't need my stitch marker anymore. Okay, there is my octopus. Now it is time to make the legs. Now this part of the octopus is no sew, meaning you can do the rest of this without any sewing except for basically the same amount that we just did where we hide the ends. Or you can leave a longer tail, which I will show at the end, just to tack the tentacles down a little bit. But the tentacles are going to be built on to the front loops from our previous decrease round. So how do we do that? We're going to slip and chain. So Make a slip knot just with a little bit of a tail so you can sew it in when you're finished. And you're going to attach it just in the back somewhere to one of your loops from the previous decrease row. It was row 15. Okay, so we're going to insert the hook, put that slip knot onto it pull it through, and then I'm going to chain 16. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right, so I've got this ball hanging by a chain here. Okay, now we're going to work back down this chain and it can be a little difficult sometimes because he can be wobbly, but we are going to first go into the second stitch from the chain, or the second chain from the hook here and do a slip stitch. Then the next chain do a single crochet. The next chain gets a half double crochet. The next chain gets a double. The 
And then the rest of the chains, which should be about 11, if you've done the same number as me, will be triple crochet all the way back down. So we are going to triple back down the line. And it will start to curl, but that's something that we actually want to happen so that his tentacles are all cute and curly. And this is the last one here. Okay, so now I've gotten down, back down to his body. What I'm going to do is skip two and then I'm going to slip into this third from my starting chain. So skip two stitches and then go into this front loop, slip, and then I'm going to chain 16 and do this whole thing again. Okay. Now this one, when I chain, I'm going to go down the chain in the same way, sing, uh, slip, single, half double, double, and then all triples. I'm going to, again, skip two, and then re-slip to that third to do this all over again. I'm going to speed this up so you see it all, but there's no reason you need to watch me do all these thing, all these triple crochets at regular speed. So here it goes. Okay, now I'm going to do this six more times, and I'll join you right back here. Okay, I now have eight tentacles, beautifully curled around those front loops from row 15 of our body. Then I will use this last loop to slip stitch at the front of the round, the start, and then pull that through and cut it. Now, I'm gonna leave a longer tail so that I can show how to sew the tentacles on and attach them. Okay, so this first tail 
from the beginning of the round, you can just make disappear inside like our other tail. Just push it through so that it's snug and out of the way. Mine came unthreaded because it was short. I'm just going to stick it back in and make it magically disappear inside. Okay, so that tail is out of the way. Now, if you would like to weave your octopus like this, you may, or you can attach the tentacles with a little stitch on each one. If you are not attaching the tentacles, you can skip ahead where I will show creating the mouth. So to attach the tentacles to make them a little bit more secure, you're going to go into the body of the octopus, come back out at the center of one of those last triple crochets at the end of that chain, go up through a stitch, uh, a piece of that triple crochet, and then back into your octopus and over to the next stitch or the next tentacle where we will do the same thing coming out at around the center of the tentacle. And this is the part where the curly ones get in the way and are a little bit annoying. Okay, so then we're, we came out in the middle of where this tentacle is. We're gonna go through part of that triple crochet and then just back in. We're gonna do this all the way around. Come out at the center of where that triple crochet is, go through a stitch or piece of that triple crochet and then back in. all the way around. This just makes them a little bit more secure, makes your piece a little bit more tidy. So there's no holes in between where the tentacles are, are attached to the body. Okay, is that all? And that's all of them. So then I will just go back in so that that tentacle is attached. And I'm going to go in here. Doesn't matter what stitch you go into. You don't have to do the exact same one I do. I'm just going to go into a stitch next to where I came out so that I can tie a knot just with my yarn here. Just a little bit snug there. And then I'm going to hide this yarn just like I did other yarn, the other yarn tails, where I pop out somewhere else and go back in just to hide the tail and make my knot a little bit more secure. Okay, and I will trim that. Okay, so now I need to do my smile. So for the smile, you need a little bit of black yarn. So this is a great time for scraps. I just pulled this out of my scrap bin. I'm gonna trim this end so it's a little less frayed. You really don't need much yarn at all, just enough that you can really comfortably thread your needle, pull it through, and be able to tie a knot at the end. All right, so for the smile that I'm gonna place on the octopus, I'm gonna use an embroidery stitch called fly stitch. I'm gonna go in, uh, let's see, where do I do on this one? Two, about two rows below the eye in the center. So 
one, two, and I'm going to put it in the center. I'm going to put it in one, skip a stitch, come out the next. Gently pull it through, leaving a tail, because you're going to need that to tie a knot. I'm going to go back in the same stitch that I was in before, where I went in in the beginning, and I'm going to come out in the center between the stitches in the first row up here. But I'm going to make it come through above and not below so that it grabs it. And I'm going to go back in the same hole I just came up and out where I started. I'm going to hold this down so that it doesn't slip out of place as I pull it. So there you've got your smile. And then I'm going to tie a loose knot. Well, not loose, but not so tight that it pulls the smile out of position. I'm just going to tie one and two little knots. And then I'm going to hide these tails inside the body, re-thread my needle with both, and just stick it inside. And you can kind of give these a little tug to make sure that your knot pulls through and so that you're not left with a knot next to his smile. You can kind of use your needle to push it back out if you need to. And then trim these ends. And if you need to, you can use, again, use this needle to just go inside and pull that through to hide it. And there you are. You have your own adorable little octopus. These are so fun to make with scrap yarn because as you can see, it really does not take a lot of yarn to make one of these. And they work up pretty quickly once you get the hang of it. Uh, you can make them with safety eyes, you can make them with stitched on eyes, you can use this fly stitch as eyes or use it upside down to be sleepy eyes uh, or more anime style eyes. And you can use even thicker yarn with bigger hooks to make these in different sizes and textures. I will have this PDF of the pattern available on my website, greenhookstudio.com, available for download for a dollar if you would like to um, have the printout to not have to watch the video every time. And I hope to see some lovely octopi from you. If you are on the socials, please tag me in the picture of your finished products. Happy crocheting! <music>